That was a long time ago. Um, so um, we would think that this would work, but I'm going to save us some trial and error here. Um, it actually turns out that term um, may have spaces in it and um, may munch the URL and not work that well. So we can um, go back to our sorry back to our friend regular expressions and use the replace method, which we have. Um, I can't remember, Horsey, did we pull that from Perl or from JavaScript? Yeah. Okay. As, as are all of our regular expressions. So if you're doing research, um, we're using the Perl version of regular expressions. Um, that's also good to know. So this, all this does is replace spaces with pluses. So that, that that fixes our space issue. So now if we come in here and instead of displaying num, we can display term. Remember we're setting, oh, let's actually, instead of doing num, let's do tweet here. I'm going to go ahead and save this and pray that it works. Doesn't. Okay, yeah, thank you. Oh, shoot. That was really bad. Um, so, don't, so, since I didn't save it, luckily I have it right here. So, let me go ahead and pull out the for each. So, um, Mike, we need to make a note to separate those two links a little bit. But <laughs> okay. We'll go ahead and save. Um, save is also bound to Control S. So you can use Control S to save. It looks like that was good this time. I'm going to go back here. Crash. Run this. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. Okay. Did I? Um, in my other code, I actually had to, okay, I know what's happening. <laughs> All right, so basically what happened was I was returning a JavaScript object, which actually doesn't display anything when you spit it out. If you go back to JSON lint here, what I was getting back in tweet is this entire thing. And that's not going to show anything. In fact, um, I save that. We should now, instead of tweet, be able to put the text of the tweet here. Wait for that. Save. So basically, what was hap what we're going to what we're doing in this line here is we're using our pick operator to once again traverse this JSON image. And we're going in, and this is the value that we want here, is this text, this text value. I don't know why that's not saving. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so now that we have um, that, I'm going to go ahead and run this again. There we go. So now we have our tweets coming through all of our notif in our notification. So, it's been a long road to get there, but um, this gets easier the more you do it. So, um, that's all well and good, but I really want this to display a little bit nicer. I mean, I, I could go, if I go into the documentation here, 
and I do a, a search for notify. Um, I'm going to get a lot of stuff here. So, care, under KRL, we get this nice tree that has all of our different actions. Notify is just one of the actions that we have. And if we look at the code on that, we actually have a bunch of options that we can give the, uh, the notify. Um, and that syntax is just with, uh, you just add with, and then the option and the value at the end. Um, so we can actually see this in action clicking this. So these are the different options that you can give it. Yeah? Okay. So the question is, what is the pre block here? And the, the pre is basically, I like this, I come from the old Pascal days um, where you had to declare all your variables at the top before your begin statement. And I kind of liken that to the pre block here. The pre is just a place where you can set up a bunch of variables and values that you'll use later in your actions or your callbacks. Does that answer your question? It's not required. Um, but it's for, for this where we just, we want to pull out the text from our, from our tweet and then we're going to use that later in the action. Yeah. Yes. For, for each time in a loop. So this actually would be better if it were indented underneath the, the for each there. Like that. So, and the specimen editor is really nice. Um, it's not quite TextMate yet. So. <laughs> um, great. So that's how that's how far we are. Um, now, um, the next concept that I wanted to talk about is rule execution and what order rules are running. So I'm just going to quickly um, pound out a new rule here. Um, rule test is active. And the active just basically uh, is nice because you can go in and just, if you're troubleshooting a problem and you've got a bunch of rules firing, you can set those to inactive, all one word, inactive like that, and um, turn that rule off while you're troubleshooting or maybe during a, a specific deployment you're not ready to deploy certain rules. Um, yes, I believe so. Is that right, Horsey? I've never used them. Multi-line comment. Okay. That's right. Sorry, I was wrong. Single line comment. Um, but I can basically put in another rule here. Oh. And if I were to run this, this rule would run first. And then this rule. And this is an interesting thing because we can use rules to set up the page for subsequent rules. So right here, what I really want to do is I want to insert a div into Google that I'm then going to put all of the tweets into. And so I need to actually run that first. So um, again, in the interest of time here, um, Okay, so Craig Burton does a good job with his tutorials. He has a lot of them, and, and they're very good. They're long, and they're detailed, so you get a lot of info from them. Um, another place you can go on our documentation, uh, craigburton.com. Another place you can go is uh, we have a cookbook on the documentation site. And it looks like the network is dropping off again. So we have, we have basic recipes, intermediate recipes, advanced recipes, 